perhaps a strange video, but anyway, I was looking on the World Wide Web for capacitors. And there are, of course, many capacitors, radial, axial, etc., etc., uh, electrolytic, radial, 1 microfarad, 60 volts, um, 12 cents, at Rijgeld, that's a German uh, factory or resource, and here also from other um, World Wide Web sellers, uh, there are other capacitors. For instance, Elco Radial 100 microfarad, 16 volts. 18 cents. So let's look at that capacitor. Interesting to show. Here we have that capacitor again. It's mount and made for surface mounted uh, design. Only 18 cents. That's, that's not much. But let's look further at the properties. And for instance here we read, and that's quite strange, in my opinion at least, that uh, this capacitor has a lifespan of 2000. What does that mean? 2000 hours. That's strange. When we consider that we have in a day 24 hours, so 10 times 24 is 240. And again, 10 times that value. Well, um, that means, for instance, that this capacitor doesn't have a very long lifespan. The tolerance is also 20%. So this is the problem problem where it's in my opinion all about the lifespan of such a capacitor is it really 2000 hours well perhaps you don't have to buy it but I'm almost sure that this value 2000 hours has to do something with a test on the highest temperature 85 degrees Celsius and then for a long time under the, uh, the voltage for which it was made and that is 16 volts but perhaps it will be a long time uh, endurance test on say 20 volts or so I don't know that exactly but this lifespan is, in my opinion, very low. And I have to say, I had many experiences with electrolytic capacitors in the past. Uh, I had quite a few of them soldered out of old electronic equipment, uh, say from the 1980s, even the 1970s. And when I measure these capacitors that were on stock, um, sometimes they were good, especially the Philips uh, capacitors, but sometimes they were bad. So the more unknown uh, manufacturers uh, of the 1970s. Anyway, um, well, let's look at another capacitor, try to find um, another capacitor with a better, with better, with a longer endurance. I hope this word Elcos will take up, say, the good. Uh, 
all the good things that I the typical things that I want to tell. Uh, here we have, for instance, on the website of the same factory, Rijgeld, that's where I buy my components in general. Of course, sometimes on other websites. Here we have a capacitor that has a value of one microfarad and the um, time, the lifetime is 1000 up to 5000 hours. The tolerance is 20%, okay, that's normal, and it costs 24 cents. But again, I don't know what this means. For instance, when you solder such an electrolytic into a circuit, could be that, for instance, that electrolytic is on a critical position, for instance, between the positive and the negative, then it constantly has to hold on to charge, say, uh, here is 6.3 volts, of course, in such a case you cannot go higher, uh, it constantly has to hold the charge, in that case, between, say, 5 volts and uh, the ground, say, zero. In such an application, and given the temperatures, um, say, normally 20 degrees Celsius, perhaps it can hold out uh, 5,000 hours. Uh, but I found in practice, in practice much more endurance of these capacitors especially from the better brands like Panasonic. So I think this is a quite conservative value here. And here we have the same property, 5000 hours maximum for this capacitor, 1 microfarad, 60 volts. And let's go to the higher value capacitors. <coughs> All one microfarad. Um, I hope to get to higher values. Yes, this is a higher value. 330 microfarad, 25 volts. And here we don't see a, <coughs> say, uh, endurance figure. Uh, it's not told. Uh, does this can this capacitor hold out? Say, uh, can it hold out uh, uh, two thousand hours, hundred thousand hours? I, I really don't know. So that's kind of an unsure factor. And they are very, say, cheap. For instance, this one uh, here. I have to move the camera somewhat. This one is, oh, this is one euro, but this is, for instance, 14 cents. That's cheap. But I don't know how long this capacitor can last. And what I wanted to say here in this video is don't uh, worry too much about all these capacitor values and especially the endurance. Solder them in and especially when capacitors, electrolytic capacitors get hot or warm in power supply uh, appliances that's uh, the situation where you have to search for the absolutely best value of the capacitor. A long endurance time, a high temperature, say thousands of hours, and a don't fix on the here on the price, but for instance, use the uh, 
more expensive ones. And sometimes you can get a capacitor for uh, uh, 25 cents that can handle, of course, the higher temperature, etc., etc. And some, sometimes you can get the same capacitor of 220 microfarad uh, that can handle, that's more expensive, and even on the same voltages. So, in my opinion, it's a good idea to uh, use the, say, capacitors with a somewhat higher price. And you have to look, of course, also at the properties of the capacitor, <coughs> the temperature that it can withstand, that's, that's always important. And this is, of course, 105 degrees Celsius is the maximum uh, temperature that such a capacitor can handle. The best thing is, of course, say 20 degrees Celsius or even 60 <coughs> degrees Celsius in a, an automotive application or 70 degrees Celsius. But for instance, for an automotive application, this is a good value, 105 degrees Celsius. Because in a car, in an automotive application, a capacitor can get very, very warm due to the motor or the solar uh, influence that shines on the dashboard or so, where such a capacitor in a car radio or whatever has to do its job. So, well, 30 pages here, that's a lot. Let's go to page 30 and look what's here. Well, that's a good capacitor, and also for a very cheap price. Uh, 220 microfarad, 35 volts, 25 cents. The endurance in hours is not given. But for instance, when you have to choose, for instance in a timer, between a capacitor of 230 micro, sorry, 220 micro, microfarad <coughs> and 10 volts and 220 microfarad and 60 volts, use the 60 volts capacitor. It has better properties for a timer. Uh, so that means that also <coughs> the say uh, the application where you want to use that capacitor is important so in a timer uh, the capacitor must very slowly lose its charge and for in other applications that is not a problem or not an issue that's another thing of course and here a 470 microfarad capacitor, 50 volts, All, always a very good and usable value. 470 microfarad, 50 volts, you can use it anywhere where you want to use it. Um, as a smoothing capacitor, as a capacitor that can bridge, say, an audio stage to make it more stable. 50 volts is also very good, of course, when the audio stage is uh, supplied by 60 volts. This doesn't work. You need a, say, 80 volts capacitor. But anyway, this is a very handy and not very, uh, say, uh, expensive capacitor with a good value. So here you see, for instance, um, well, I'm not sure about the value here. MF, I don't know. Anyway, not microfarad. But for instance, you see here a capacitor of 100 microfarad uh, 
25 volts that is not expensive and you a useful one but at the same time you can find capacitors of the same value that are expensive let's go to page 29 then i want to stop my video because it's already 15 minutes well again the same capacitor that why i was talking about earlier anyway so well i hope this was a kind of uh, interesting video about electrolytic capacitors uh, my aim is always uh, to use uh, uh, in practice a somewhat higher voltage that the, that the capacitor can withstand so here is a 35 volts capacitor I use this for instance in a 12 volt circuit or a 24 volt circuit but I, I will never use that on a 30 volt circuit and when of course uh, as a uh, when this capacitor is used as a power supply capacitor so uh, say values 50 volts DC for a 30 volt circuit etc etc well that was more or less all to tell thanks